Scott Hedman, Steve and Kate talking about their main event fight on the inaugural Maverick MMA One card. Uh, welcome, gentlemen. Thank you so much for your time this evening. Uh, first question goes out to Scott. Scotty, you're coming back from retirement. Uh, talk about your mindset and, uh, and and what this all means. Is this uh, you know is this a, a, a the start of you reclaiming your spot uh, as one of the top lower weight weight fighters in the region? Absolutely. Um, I think if uh, if you look at my whole entire career, I just kept battling. Um, I was doing so many fights in a short period of time, and I needed to mentally and physically step away from the the cage for a while to to regrasp, you know, the whole reason why I was fighting. Talk about, uh, you know, talk about what went into your uh, to your mindset towards uh, the end of uh, last summer when you were going into retirement, and what's what's changed now? What's uh, what's different in your life? You know, I had um, a lot of personal issues that were weighing a lot on me with my family and, and whatnot. It didn't allow me to, to properly train mentally. And, um, you know, I, I just felt like my wife and I, we, we sat down, we talked, and uh, it was time to retire at that time. And, um, you know, things have, have gotten better, um, and it allowed me to refocus and regain a motivation to step back in the cage. Now talk about that energy. I'm, I'm assuming you've, uh, you know, you've taken that energy at the beginning of this year and, and it's, uh, it's why you returned. Talk about, uh, using that energy and, and how this camp has gone so far. Well, I mean, after everything resided, uh, it felt like a huge weight has been lifted off, off my shoulders and, uh, Everybody knows when they watch me fight, and, and I'm 100% focused, there's no stopping me. Um, I'll go, to, you know, and uh, it's great. It's a great feeling to feel that this is all I have to focus on is to train and to get my hand raised at the end of the day. Steve, talk about, uh, talk about where you're at at this point in your career, what motivates you, and, uh, and what are you fighting for, both specific, specifically in this fight with Scott and, uh, and in general? You know, I'm getting up there, so and I'm 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 winding down. You know, this is uh, you know, probably one of uh, my last ones. Probably this one and one more. Uh, you know, I haven't had the greatest career as, as it shows, but you know that that doesn't define me. It doesn't define the, the fighter that I am. Uh, you know, there there's fights where you know when when I'm on my game, when you know when my head's right, when you know, when I fight like I do, when I fight like I should, I, I don't think there's anybody that I can be. It doesn't matter who it is. I, I don't think there's anybody that, you know, that, that I can't get in there with and, and, and put the work in and win the fight again. I think... Uh, Talk about fight camp. Who have you been training with and, uh, and, and what, what are you working on technically? <clears throat> uh, well, I got a... Uh, I started running a program down at uh, 302 BJJ. I run a Muay Thai program down there. Uh, other, you know, other than that, I, I train with all the same guys, man. Uh, 302. Uh, train, still go up. Train with the balance guys up in Center City. Still, you know, real good friends with, you know, Will Chavo Martinez. So, always uh, cross training. You know, looking to cross train with them guys also whenever I can. Willie, uh, for the record, I've, I've been uh, I've been involved in MMA for a while. Steve is one of the, the guys that I would always see at any gym I went to. Steve was always there. He's one of those guys that gets along with everybody. Um, I remember watching a ton of Steve's fights. Um, he, he has this one incredible flying knee knockout. It's one of the best highlights I've ever seen Like on, on regional, MMA, UFC, Bellator. It's just one of the best knockouts ever. Steve's always a humble dude. So I think you're being very humble with all that. I haven't had the greatest career. Because win, lose, or draw, you you know, you know your career has been a, a ton of fantastic highlights. And I also want to say Steve is fearless, uh, a genuine bounty hunter. Uh, Steve will fight a werewolf for the right purse and travel money. Um, but I want to know, Steve, what does it mean to fight another legend? And I, I put you in that legend category. Another legend like Scott at this point in your career. How, how do you feel main eventing the inaugural Maverick Fights card? And uh, what are your thoughts on... Uh, potentially winning a title. I, mean, I, I think it's great, man. You know, um, 
you know, it's cool to, you know, be the main event of a, a new upcoming promotion. You know, uh, you know, if we, you know, do some work again, whether it's with me or my guys, I wish you the best on it. You know, and I'm, I'm hoping we can kick it off and, you know, really put, you know, put Maverick on the map and, and get you guys a good following. Uh, you know, as, as far as the fight with Scott, like it, you know, you, you, we're we're both kind of generally in the same area, so you see this guy, you see that guy all around, and you know, you always think, oh, it's probably just a matter of time before we cross paths. Uh, so I, I I kind of figured maybe eventually we would, you know, and it just so happens that you know this is the time. Scott, uh, this is a classic striker versus wrestler bout, but during your last fight, uh, you threw some out of character strikes, um, like a spinning back fist. Uh, are we going to see? Uh, are we going to see you a little more conservative against such a great striker like Steve, or are we going to see the Anderson Silva Scott Heckman? Uh, you're going to see a mix of everything. Um, I, I switched up a few um, training partners. Um, I'm working with uh, Sargis now. He used to be Paul Felder's striking coach. And uh, he's implementing a lot of a lot of striking angles and, and some pretty cool stuff that, that you might uh, see during the fight. Um, but yeah, things uh, every fight that I go into, I'm always trying to implement something new. And um, you know, there's always that grind. You know, I I, I don't get tired. I grind, you know, through a hundred percent. So yeah, that's the whole wrestling mentality. Do you feel like you can finish Scott in this fight? And if so, how? Yeah, I I feel like I can finish anybody. Uh, I think uh, I think I can if I can if I connect with anyone, you know, in the right spot, I I, I can put him to bed. Um, and again, you know, you look at you know all, all the you know on paper, you know how it looks, how you know how bad I am on the map, but I. I'm comfortable on the mat. You know, I, I have finishes um, by submissions also. Uh, you know what I mean? So I, I think I can finish the fight, um, you know, anywhere, really. Uh, again, you know, with, with a guy like Scott, I, I know he's going to be, you know, grinding on top. I know he's going to be heavy on top. He's a good wrestler. He's good at what he does, you know. Um, and, I'm, you know, I'm good at what I do, so... I think it makes for a really, you know, really interesting fight. Scott, talk about uh, talk about your new training regimen. Uh, you said you've been training with uh, with some new guys. You mentioned Sargus. Um, talk about where you've been getting your jujitsu work in. Uh, I know you're still doing the same uh, strength and conditioning work with uh, with Maiden Craig Merrick. It just uh, talk about your jujitsu training and uh, and any other new coaches or training partners uh, for this camp. Um, I'm working out at finishers a lot for my jiu-jitsu wrestling um, uh, with uh, Zach Holland or uh, Zach and uh, John Holland. Um, and I'm also at Andy Nade at Pure. And I'm working with him a lot. I'm actually on my way home from there now. But, um, I mean, they have great training partners. You have Melvis, you have Claudio, um, you got Andy Maine, Mike Maine. I mean, it's, it's endless. You got Shorty who comes over once in a while. Um, but it, it's endless, and what's nice about it is it, a lot of guys from different walks of life that throw different things into a fight game. Um, so it, it's perfect for me, you know. And, and I'm able to pick out different um, different types of partners for each camp, and uh, we, we have set people for this camp for to, to fight Steve. And um, you know, you also said with Craig Merrick, he's been with me for about five six years. And uh, he has been my right-hand man, uh, making sure my nutrition's on point, my strength's on point, my conditioning. Um, and then, like I said, I just picked up Sargus, and uh, he's taking my uh, stand-up game to a whole new level. That uh, is making me feel confident and comfortable at the same time. And when you mix those two things together, it's pretty dangerous. Good stuff. Any, uh, any other questions for you, Mike? I have a question off-topic. Um, Steve, you just had a, uh, a baby with your fiance, Devin, uh, you're a fighter, yeah. Devin's a fighter. Uh, what are your thoughts as a fighter on your child growing up and maybe wanting to get into a cage since it's in the DNA so much? Uh, uh, you know, I have, uh, I have my little, my little nugget, my little baby girl. 
And uh, I also have my, my son also. Uh, he's 14 now. But, I mean, honestly, you know, I, I love this sport. You know, again, I, I've been doing it for so long. Um, if they decided, hey, you know, Dad, I, I want to get into this. I want to start fighting. They, they wouldn't have a, a bigger fan than me. You know, uh, I, I'd say I would encourage it, you know, right right off the bat. You know, I, I'm not going to push it on either one of them. I haven't pushed it on my son. I'm not going to push it on my daughter. You know, but if, if they choose to train, they, they want to start fighting, it's great. We'll just, we'll just, we'll just keep it going. And Scott, you answer the same same question because Scott uh, Scott's got the same thing at home with uh, with his with his kids. Wow, that's kind of funny because um, my daughter came home this year and uh, with a piece of paper from Schaefer Elementary, and it had a list of all kinds of sports in the fall and whatnot. And uh, the very first thing she said to my wife, and I think I was out walking my dog or something, and uh, she told my wife that she wanted to start wrestling. And, uh, you know, the biggest smile in the world. She's like, we, we don't instill that. I don't bring up the whole fighting and whatnot. She, she can watch it. But um, we don't we don't push it on any of the kids. And, um, but, you know, if that's the, the, the route she wants to go, I'm all for it. You know, I'm not – whatever they want to do, I don't care if it's, if it's uh, you know, playing instruments or, or fighting or even jiu-jitsu. It's, it's, it's cool with me. Scott, you're a CFFC vet, X fights, Bellator. You fought and beat some of the best regional fighters on uh, the radar. How far could Scott Heckman have gone had you got that call uh, when you were 22, 23? That well, UFC call. When I started my career, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't start fighting until I was late, like 27, 26. And um, so, uh, you know, I came from a D1 uh, college wrestling background, and um, I started at Anthony Contuno at uh, Revolution Academy, and they, they've taken me, they, they did a very good job of molding me, and then um, I went to AMA Fight Club, but, um, you know, uh, it was a mixture of things why I retired, you know, the politics, um, the family, uh, personal reasons, stuff like that. It was just weighing on me. And uh, the constant pressure of, you got to get that call, you got to get that call. It was, I could have went far with it, but I think I'm more happy now that I'm having fun. Uh, it started to become a point that it wasn't fun anymore. And um, when you start thinking about that and your family and stuff, that's when you get hurt. But, um, you know, I'm happy where I'm at now and and like I said, I can enjoy it again. Okay. Uh, I've, I've personally seen that enjoyment you're describing. I've, I, I remember seeing you a couple of years ago when it didn't look like training was much fun. And, and just the way you're describing is, is the way I've seen it in recent training. Uh, does your mind tell you that you can, you know, is, is this a, a, a run back to see if, uh, if we can get back to Bellator or the UFC? Or? You know, uh, it's funny because I get goosebumps. And, like, a year or two ago, I wouldn't even get goosebumps thinking about it. But I do because before, you know, in the last year and a half, two years before I retired, it was hard getting training partners. It was hard with the travel, with, with having a, a, a baby, a new son. Um, but now things are, are, like, planned out. I have a regimen, and, and I'm getting the proper training. So it's like things are falling back into place like they used to. And it's a good feeling to have. And, yeah, I'm not saying that's out of the question. I'm not shooting for that. You know, I'm shooting to have fun and, and to do what I love. And the second it becomes not fun anymore, I'm okay of stepping away. Now, with having, uh, having Maverick MMA come along and having, having uh, a promotion without politics, was that a, a contributing factor also to the comeback? Absolutely, it was it was a huge factor because you know you put all the BS aside and, and you know you're it's like having a handshake. You know you don't have to worry about the contracts and stuff like that. You're there to fight. If I do my job, train, medical, you know tickets and stuff like that, and there should be no other issues. Um, 
and and you, you know, Maverick has really made it very stress free for me to just to train, and and I appreciate it. You know, there's other promotions that I was I was with, and they pushed you. They're you know made you guarantee, made you do this. You know, and, and it was tough. It was tough when you had a full time job. It was tough, you know, to train, and then you're worried about um, if you're going to breach your contract because you're not going to do tickets or something like that, and now you're stressed. So, you know, this has been a great camp all around, and, and I enjoy it. Are you at a point at that at that at that uh, spot in your mind as well, Steve, where you're just uh, you know you're enjoying training now, and this is uh, something that is is less of a stress and less of a hard 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 thing, and and more of a, a an enjoyment point for you? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, I I love doing this. You know, um, you know, I still work a full time job, I'm a full time dad. You know, I, I teach also. Uh, you know, it's just great that, you know, I also get to, you know, also continue to do something that I absolutely love doing. Uh, you know, I, I have a, just have a lot of fun, you know, uh, fighting, competing. Um, but, you know, it comes a time where you have to start looking at, you know, it's time to go. And, um, you know, my, my time's coming. You know, I guess there's maybe this one or one more. But... I'm, I'm always having fun, you know, training, sparring, wrestling, rolling. I, I'm always having a good time, you know, getting my work in, but also knowing, you know, not knowing the task at hand, you know, uh, this camp, but, you know, I got, I got some, you know, some good talent around me. You know, I got some, you know, some good wrestlers around me, uh, you know, working with Eddie Hall from Hall of Fame, uh, personal training. <coughs> For my strength and conditioning, uh, you know, swimming. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I feel good, man. And you know, it's just it's gonna be a lot of fun these days. Awesome, gentlemen. Well, thank you guys so much for your time this evening on the call, and we will see you both in two weeks, uh, March 18th, at the Reebok Open Workout in Tannersville. Thank you, gentlemen, so much for your time tonight. Right, Thanks guys. for having us on, man.